Welcome to another edition of Recession Talk with your host, your hustling godfather, Glendon. Today, we're going to talk about something that I actually witnessed as a kid growing up, the history of Harley Davidson. One of the things that's very profound, that's very interesting about the history of Harley Davidson is they made junk. Let's go back to the beginning. Harley Davidson was the largest motorcycle company in the world at one point. True story. You can look it up. And they made more bikes. They were exporting bikes all over the place. Then something happened. The quality just turned out to be horrible. They were unreliable. They leaked oil. I knew people who weren't going to get a Harley. And I'm going to tell you, and I witnessed this. There was Suzuki, Honda, there was a lot of Japanese bikes. And then when these bikes started to hit American shores, really in the 70s, people bought them because they were cheaper and they were better than Harley Davidson. Kind of crazy, I know, right? If you're just joining us, one of the big situations was Harley Davidson was screaming that the Japanese were just dumping. Just in dumping is when you take a product and you sell it cheaper than it would it cost to make on American shores. And that just wasn't the case. So Harley Davidson sent a group of people over to study the manufacturing processes of Japanese motorcycles. And they came back and their minds were blown and they started to use those processes at Harley Davidson and the rest is history. They started to produce a wonderful product. Now, why did this happen? Because there was competition. Donald wants there not to be any competition. And it's about protectionism. But for all of you bike riders out there, for all you folks who enjoy the wind in your face, the zoom zoom of a bike, how many of you have owned Japanese motorcycles? And ask yourself, why did you get this? Because I remember when I was in middle school, people had these pocket rockets, these Suzuki's. Um, it was a Samurai and it was another one. And sometimes you have guys who were riding motorcycles in, in motorcycle clubs. They all had Japanese bikes. They were faster. They were more reliable. And they just lasted longer. But the more important part here is with the competition because right now we have global competition that forced harley davidson to go ahead and put out a much better product and it forced them to compete and it forced them to do better another parallel to this is american car makers how many of you remember you know your parents had like a chevy a ford after, you know, they got 50, 60,000 miles, they were trash. I mean, it was considered good for a car to get 100K. That was like, wow, man, you did something. Now you got um, foreign-made cars, especially those old Volvos, those tanks. You got a lot of those suckers running around with three and 400,000 miles on them. Once again, because the Japanese put out such a great product, and if you ever notice something, I'm going to bring this screen up because this, this is funny. GDP per country. Let me bring this up, make it a little bit bigger because this is something that I noticed in my research the other day. It's very interesting. All right, so let's make it bigger. Zoom it up, zoom it up. All right, y'all should be able to see it. Now, all of the countries with very high GDP, and there's only like a handful of them, they make heavy industrial equipment. United States. Okay, this this is this is very interesting. This this is a group of countries. Uh, I think this is a little dubious here. 
because uh, this includes Germany. All right, so we'll, we'll just skip over that. But the United States, China. China is the manufacturing corner of the world, and they will overtake us in GDP. Japan, Honda, Toyota, Lexus, uh, some commercial robots, not, oh, I guess in the future, commercial construction equipment, Germany, BMW, Audi, United Kingdom, Lotus, uh, what is that other car? Uh, I forget the name of it. I can see it. France, then India, then Italy, then Brazil. All of these countries produce heavy equipment, cars, manufacture stuff. All these countries do that. And then when the big drop off, these countries don't. They don't have a robust manufacturing sector. And one of the things that Dear Donald is doing is, and it's going to backfire. And this isn't me hating on Donald. This is me observing economic principles that when you try protectionism, and it's been tried many times before, that's just how we know it doesn't work. What happens is tariffs and stuff, and this is what's driving Harley Davidson jobs out of America. And I think they wanted to do it, but now this is giving them a good economic reason to do it. Is when you impose these tariffs, they just do not work. And you have it. And I'm going to do on my new channel because uh, the first video is going to be American exceptionalism. But right now, we're going to deal with what's happening with Harley Davidson and how this iconic American brand is now going to be building motorcycles in the UK and they're going to be building motorcycles in the Philippines. <laughs> the Philippines. You know, the Philippines is an island, right? It's an island. <laughs> Which is kind of crazy. So we got all that going on. Now part of this is. And once again. And one of the reasons I'm doing recession talks. And is to get you guys to start your own businesses. To get you guys to save money. To get you guys to prepare. Is this next recession is going to be unlike any that most of us experienced. I don't know if any of you remember the oil embargoes of the 70s and when people had to get gas on alternate days think stuff like that seriously think something like that because uh this morning i was doing my research and i was looking at certain things and the number of because retail is in a depression retail sector is not in a recession it is in a depression you have multiple brands closing Hundreds of stores, in the case of Toys R Us, they're, they're going out of business. Like this week, they're going out of business. And part of that is these companies did not move with the times. These companies ignored the Internet for a very, very long time. And that's something we didn't do in our business. Even when I was in the store trucking business, we leveraged the power of eBay. We leveraged the power of Amazon. We leveraged the power of Craigslist. Never had I had a business of my own that I did not use the Internet. You have these big brands <clears throat> with CEOs who don't even have emails accounts. They just ignored it and it's going to bite them in the ass. And that's what one of the things that's happening with many of these companies. Now, a larger part of this is happening because I was watching a video about a housing bubble in the UK and then a housing bubble in many bigger cities. So that was some interesting information. But essentially, efficiency, lack of paying attention to the Internet is that these companies can do a lot more with less. And that's really what's driving a lot of this. Because unless there's just a heavy balance sheet, like when uh, Amazon bought Whole Foods, they bought them because Whole Foods was in a shit ton of debt. So that's one of the things. What's up, Mentor Shelley? Be real. 
Amwar, what's going on? What's up, Radiance Cashmatic? <laughs> really? That popped up? That's wild. Be real. Some Harley Davidson bikes cost as much as cars and special make and cost as much as a house in the city places. Yep. No, the, the sales, everything's been off. Yeah, that's all has been off. The sale is over. But I, I, I got some coming that you're really going to like. So just hold off. Ford sucked in the 80s and 90s. Uh, in the 70s, too. You remember this big Crown Vic or the LT, LTDs? I remember my Aunt Evelyn had one. And that car, it was so big, it kind of floated like a boat. And they were cranking this stuff out. And they was making shitty products. And these people were getting paid a lot of money to put out a shitty product. <laughs> a lot of money. Anthony Johnson, it's crazy because I told a co-worker about this. Couldn't believe it. I think he's a low-key Trump supporter. Well, many people are, what's up, Michael Dennis? Many people are rooted in fear. And what Trump says sounds really good because it's like us against them. And in my American exceptionalism video, I'm going to talk about the principles that, you know, America is one is the youngest superpower. It is the youngest superpower. France, Italy, uh, the European, all these countries are like hundreds of years old, or in the case, thousands of years old. <clears throat> America's only like 200 and some years old. The, and we're, we are the biggest, the richest country in the world. And we got there due to certain principles that, once again, I'll, I'll boot in the video, and it's going to be on the new channel. I'll let y'all know. Herbert Chapman, okay. Indian makes high-end bikes in Kings Mountain, North Carolina. Line it can be done. Um, Harley bikes are overpriced for what they are. <laughs> okay. I'm just saying that one of the reasons that they're moving their production to other countries is because labor costs are cheaper. They wanted to do that all along, and this just gave them the reason. Josh Hill just saw an article in on CNN that said families earning a one hundred and seventeen thousand in San Francisco. Uh, Bay Area qualifies low income. Absolutely. When your average house price is like 700K, you can't get a 700K house on 117. Absolutely. Once again, China coming in, suitcases of cash, because they're minting all of these millionaires due to their robust manufacturing sector. And every China man wants to have his son and daughter go to an American university and come back and take these principles, because this is the problem with China. China has, China is very much like the Borg. You know, Star Trek, the Borg, one collective mind, that is very much how China is. And they know that unless they bring in creativity in um, certain aspects and certain things that allow the individual to say, hi, I'm autonomous, I can do this on my own, they're, they're going to hit a, a, a roadblock. They're really going to hit a roadblock. But China is run by some very smart guys who understand the problem. And what they're doing is they're spreading their money around the world. And they're making it where people are they're ingratiating themselves to people because, see, what they're doing is they're building infrastructure in foreign countries. They're making the investments that we once would have done. But, you know, because now all of a sudden we're like, we don't need to be the, the global leader of the world. We just like to be like every other country. And they're going to get ahead of us because China is laying seeds in Africa, big times. China's laying seeds in South America, big time. And this uh, protectionism thing is going to end up biting us in the ass. There was a reason that America was there in everyone's business. I've learned, I've encouraged him to start a hustle, but he sold on going to to get a mechanic degree and work solely for Harley. A lot of people are like that, man. A lot of people, that's what they want to do. That is the secret sauce in their hustle. But typically, what's going to happen is due to efficiency, and efficiency is going to wipe out a lot of jobs. Efficiency and automation. Uh, someone left a comment that automation was already here. I would beg to differ. Automation is here in its embryo stages. And what I mean is 
one day you're going to be zipping down the highway and you're going to see one guy at a construction site with a remote control running four or five machines. You know, a construction site that you would normally have 100, 150, 200 people. There's going to be one, maybe five guys on this construction site, and they're going to be watching over these machines as they build. We're, we're getting there. That's what's going to happen. So for every step in automation that we make, thousands of jobs are gone. And this is why I, I float this thing with basic income, because something's going to have to happen. Uh, China in the, China in, China's everywhere. China has the plan to only to be the only superpower through economics. Uh, they will not be the only superpower. They may plan that, but they won't. Uh, they will be very strong in economics, but there will always be at least 10 to 15 superpowers and then everyone else. And we'll probably be in the mix. We'll go from one to probably three or four. I don't think we're going to fall out of the top five, but we're definitely going to fall out of that number one slot the way that China's going. And this next recession is going to help with that. Anthony Johnson, he's in the process of a divorce with a small daughter. He really wants to be a Harley man. He's a biker type white guy. There you have it. Been the bartender pretty much. Pretty much. This is something that's already in play. And you know, it's funny when I was in the storage auction business, I had priced these out. At the time, I could have got a 10,000 square foot steel building. This didn't include the foundation for 10K. And what they would do was bring it on the site, and I either I can put it together or they would put it together for an additional fee. So I had to have the land and the foundation. Had to go ahead and get someone. But this is why you see so many of these steel buildings out in the rural areas because they're just super cheap to put up, and they're very easy to assemble. Marlon Freeman, clear your ears. I said, someday in the future, Anthony, I'm glad I invested heavily in a few heavy hitters in China. These companies really do make half a billion dollars investments. I know that they uh, have no choice but to pay off in the long run, pretty much. All right, cool. So what's going to happen? Uh, I'm not in this video, Full Melt Mike, because what I'm getting ready to do is end this. And let you know where we're going to be. Let's see. Which one am I going to do? I'm going to do. Yeah. This this will be the next one. I think I'm jumping out of order. But I'm going to give you the link. So you'll be good. So I'm going to shut this one off. And then we're going to talk about. Recession talk. Gap. Banana public stores. Closes 200 stores. And the times are good. So let me go ahead and drop this link. Up in here. You know, it's kind of funny. A lot of people come in the stream like, let's see, what, what minute mark are we at? Oh, okay, 20 minute mark. Because uh, what I'm trying to do, instead of packing all of this information in one long video, I'm trying to compartmentalize and give you a better viewing experience by putting different topics. Well, I mean, y'all, 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 y'all own that job. Y'all know when these trolls. <laughs> Y'all know how these trolls be. You know how these trolls are. Um, it's just crazy. All right, so I'm going to end this stream, and then I will start with recession talk at the gap. Give me about two or three minutes to make the adjustment. Also, watch this video a few times. Get a few nuggets out of it. Be sure to subscribe, like, comment, and share. And I will see you guys in the next stream in two to three minutes.